we are going to be talking about love and the trick t-r-i-c-k to real love and we've got definitions for each of those letters that may or may not surprise you. And I'd love to know if you agree with me. So this doesn't just doesn't, you know, refer to the loved one in your life, your partner, your spouse, whoever it may be. It also refers to the relationship you have with your children, because these five things that make up the word trick really is the trick, guys. This is really the trick. Okay, so... This is the trick, and like I said, T-R-I-C-K will have a definition for each letter, and I totally believe this is the key, guys. Now, you know, sending a surprise love note is a great idea. Just surprising your kids, surprising your honey, great idea just to send notes. Guys, girls like flowers. We like getting surprise flowers for no reason. Send them. Those little surprises and zest in your relationship are vitally important and really, really we're very grateful for those. So both ways. But let's talk about trick. Uh, okay, so first is T. What is T? T is for trust. Guys, I, I don't know how honestly you have a relationship without trust. You know, if you know how, let me in on a secret, but I feel like if you don't trust your partner or your children, there's something flawed there and you need to get help because you got to trust who you're hanging with. You got to believe in them. You've got to not doubt, doubt everything they say, everything they do. They have to trust you. Don't be so suspicious. You know, I heard a comedian once and he was talking about guys and he was talking about guys sitting on the couch and the wife coming in and going, honey, what are you up to? And he said, I have to tell you, ladies, we're not really up to anything. We're up to sitting on the couch, being a zombie in front of the TV. There are no hidden secrets there. Don't be so suspicious. Yes, trust is absolutely huge. And if you're going to be in love with someone and you want to spend a lifetime with them, trust is an absolute necessity in that relationship. If you don't trust the person before you decide to live with them forever, you may want to forget about it because it's going to be a hard road ahead of you. And if you don't trust your kids, you guys need to get help because, again, it's going to be a hard road ahead if everything you think your kids are doing is something like lying or being distrustful or doing things that you told them not to do. If you're constantly suspicious to your children, your family is not working. Okay, R, respect. Respect, my friends, is earned. You, a child does not automatically respect his parents because they're his parents. You do not automatically respect your honey because they're your honey. That respect was built when you were, you know, starting your relationship and you were dating and you were getting to know each other. That respect was built and earned. You don't work with coworkers and automatically respect them. If they don't give you respect, you don't respect them. Respect is earned and it is definitely a two-way street. If you respect someone and they start giving you reasons not to respect them, your respect dies. And in a love relationship with partners, with children, respect is a must. T was trust, R is respect gotta have it. I honestly, I don't know how relationships exist without respect. And let me give you another hint. A lot of times people slam their husbands or their wives or their partners to other people, or I hear them slamming them on Facebook, or you're talking to a group and you're talking about how, you know, your wife does this and she does this, or your husband does this, or your partner does this. 
What kind of respect is that, guys? When you slam your partner or you slam your kids, that goes right back on you. That goes right back to you because you chose this person to be your partner in life. Your kids, if you, if you show that you don't respect your kids, who do you expect to respect them? You're slamming them in public. Don't do that, guys. The people that are in your circle, the people that you truly love, they should have your respect. And if you don't, figure out how to get that respect because it is vitally important and don't slam them in public. Makes me nuts when people slam their husbands or wives or partners. I mean, it's a reflection on you and not a good reflection. Okay, number Number, letter I. So we've got T is trust, R is respect, I. And this is like a big one for me. And if you watch a lot of my live broadcasts, you know it's a big one for me. And that is integrity. Integrity is like one of the most important characteristics you can have as a human being. What does it mean? Simply put, integrity means you do what you say you're going to do. You follow through. If you say it, you mean it. If you mean it and say it, you do it. That is integrity. When you say something to your kids and you threaten them with something and you have no intention of following through, they're never going to listen to you because they know you don't follow through on all these threats. Integrity is something that will take you through life it will make you respected from other people. It will give you greatness in the workplace. It'll give you honesty and trust and truth at home. Your children will, got, will gain integrity from learning from you as a model. Your relationship, having integrity means everything in a relationship. So, so far we've got trust. We've got respect and we've got integrity. What is C? C is communication. If you can't talk to your honey or you can't talk to your kids, you will never have an open, honest, loving relationship. They will go about their way. You will go about your way. And there won't be unity in your family and in your relationship. You have to have communication. And communication is built through the three previous trust, respect, and integrity. When you have that, communication opens up. When you respect your kids and you respect their opinions and you listen to them and you allow them to have their say in the family, to suggest things that they can do to make things better, and you take heed to their advice, and you honor them with respect and you, you know, you praise them for hard work and you praise your partner for, you know, what they're doing in your home and in your world. That all breeds communication. You talk at the dinner table. You have family meetings. You have couple meetings. You sit down. You discuss your day. You ask questions that get specific responses so that you can continue a long-lasting conversation. You speak eye-to-eye each other with each other. That builds that respect. You put down the devices, the phones, the, you know, the, the tablets, all those, those distractions, the TV, and you talk one-on-one -on -one with a smile on your face. T is for for trust, R is for respect, I, I forgot how to spell, trick, I is for integrity, C is for communication, and K is for kindness. Guys, you got to be kind. Be kind. Be kind to each other. Be kind to a stranger. Be kind to your kids. Smile. Be polite. Use, use kind words. Don't cuss. Don't be so angry and screaming and yelling. Your kindness will create kindness in your relationship, which all leads up to trust and respect. Can you imagine the love that would spread through this world if we were kinder and gentler to each other? 
Be kind. If you see someone on the street who you're not necessarily having a great relationship with, say hi. Smile. It is hard to trust. It is hard to trust people. But in your own relationship, you've got to have trust. You've got to have trust with each other, with your kids. And if you don't have it, get help to build it. Walk around, let your children, let your family see that you are being friendly to other people. Walk around. Be out, be putting gas in your car. And when you're putting gas in your car, there's someone on the other side. Say hi. Ask how their day is. But sometimes when a door closes, it's because one really amazing door is about to open. And remember that when you go through relationships, learn from them. Learn from these relationships. I am divorced and remarried. I was married to my first husband for 16 years. I'm married to my second husband going on 24 years now. I think it's 24. I can't remember. Um, but there are things I do now in my relationship with my second husband that I learned because I didn't do it in my first relationship. One of those things is communication. One of those things is talking about what you need to talk about. Don't wait 15 years to bring up something that happened 15 years ago. I did that in my first relationship. There was something that happened 15 years ago and it was making me crazy. And we went through marriage counseling 15 years later and I brought it up. What could my husband actually have done? How, what could his response be? He couldn't do anything from something that happened 15 years ago. Hello, hello. So talk to each other when a problem comes up, talk then and there. Communicate about it. See how you can help work it out. Put it out there and discuss it because otherwise it could just dwell inside of you. When things come up, talk about them. I do that with my second relationship. In my relationship now, if there's a problem, I'm like in my husband's face. I'm like in his face until he talks to me. If he doesn't want to talk to me, I'll just sit there and go, okay, I'm going to be in your face until you talk to me. So you might as well talk to me before you go nuts from me sitting here and talking to you about it. Fighting. Fighting, guys, it is fighting. You're still communicating when you fight. But wouldn't it be nicer to talk about things that, you know, in a calmer way, when you fight with another person, you cause them to be angry and nothing really gets resolved. It's more of a screaming match. Same if you scream at your kids, nothing gets resolved. So when you approach things calmer and more relaxed, and if you have to think about it for three minutes before you respond, do that. Respond calmly, they will respond calmly. I'm telling you guys, it will make a huge difference. It will make a huge difference in your relationship with your honey, with your kids, with your work relationships. Try to respond calmly and respectively. Okay, so let me tell you something that girls find sexy. So you know what? A lot of times guys think they have to buy jewelry and stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I love some jewelry. But, you know, if they're busy in the house, they've got kids. They, You guys have kids. You have all this stuff to do. You want to do something nice for your, your honey, your wife, the woman in your life. Take over some of the chores for a day. Or how about this? Send her on an overnight to a hotel all by herself so she just gets to relax and chill out without the kids and all the commotion of the household. Those are things women find crazy sexy. Really just walk in and say, you know what, honey, you've had a long day. Even if you've had a long day at work, you've had a long day. Put your feet up. I'm going to make you a hot cup of tea. Relax. And enjoy, enjoy your time, read, whatever, take a bath. I'll take care of the kids and put them to bed. There are all kinds of ways that don't cost money. It's like sending a love note to show your relationships, your honey, your kids that you really care. 
And the trick is absolutely true. With trust, respect, integrity, communication, and kindness, you will have a strong, powerful, loving relationship that'll last you a lifetime.